a dad so dad says and a um a booktube of booktubes and one of the things a booktuber does is do a mid-year book freak out tag she says i hope everyone is okay my name is ben um for those who don't know me it's the mid-year it's well it's the middle of june and um we're gonna see a lot of these aren't we so i thought you know i'd get in there early so let's do a bit of a check-in shall we so uh so 2021 with my reading. So in total, I've read 38 books, so thus far. Um, only one of those was a non-fiction book. According to my story graph, um, that amounts to 12,600 pages, which is uh, thing above. And then um, my top sort of five genres are classics, which makes sense, literary fiction, which also makes sense, contemporary, historical, and then LGBTQ type fiction. So there we go. I also did some stats on the gender of my authors that I'm reading, and at the moment 56% uh, of the authors I've read have been female, and 44% uh, have been male. Um, so yes, which I was surprised by because I do read a lot of classics and, um, you know, that usually kind of bulks up the male <laughs> um, side of things, but um, but yes, I'm sweating. Ah. Right, so yes, it is time for the mid-year book freakout tag, um, and uh, yes, I've got the questions here. Last year, um, I was tagged to do this by the fabulous Alex at What Page Are You On? And um, that was kind of like, I think that was like kind of my first big shout out, so um, I, wanted, I want to uh, pay it forward. So um, yes, at the end of the video, I'm going to shout out some channels which... Um, I've been interested in and kind of want to do this tag as well, so there. So the first question, question one, is the best book you've read so far in 2021? Now, uh, I'm a snowflakey millennial and I'm also a Libran, and so I find it very difficult to um, decide between things. So I've got a, it's a tie, basically. <laughs> if the Booker Prize can do it, I can do it, so there we go. In terms of just technical skill and like prowess and oh my goodness this author is amazing and knows exactly what they're doing I've picked um Beloved by Toni Morrison um, because I just thought from start to finish sentence by sentence this was just phenomenal and um I mean it's a dodgy this is a dodgy cover so you know but um yeah I just thought this was absolutely mind-blowing in terms of the writing um and the story but just as I say, like sentence by sentence basis, she's just an amazing writer. <laughs> um, so yeah, very, very much recommend this, this cover. <laughs> and yeah, so basically it's sort of a ghost story, family um, drama set at the end of the 19th century, um, escaped slaves now trying to make, make, you know, a new life. And, um, but having the sort of the traumas of the past and the, um, mistakes bad mistakes of the past kind of coming to haunt them quite literally so yes absolutely phenomenal um piece of piece of work and piece of writing so the second um book is middle of arch by george Eliot. <laughs> um yeah just again i just thought this was really fabulous i loved reading this like all the way through it is a slow 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 burner but, um, yeah, I just thought the story and the characters and just the way that it sort of un unfolds and you've got lots of different um, sort of subplots and things going on. And I loved, I just loved that sort of central love story and stuff. And yes, as well as Mr. Castlebar. Um, yeah, I, I just really, really loved it. So there. Uh, next up, question two is best sequel you've read so far in 2021? So sequels, um, the best sequel that I read was This Mournable Body Adi Adi by Titsi Dungaremga. So this is actually the third of a trilogy, as we all know, and um, in the Nervous Conditions trilogy. And yeah, I, this was just, I've, I really loved reading this series of books. They are difficult, not diff, well, yeah, they are difficult. <laughs> they're, um, they're not easy reads they're not light-hearted laugh a minute reads they are very kind of serious and very kind of like stressful and um sort of dealing with very kind of um 
serious topics. But um, yeah, I thought this was just uh, yeah, I, I really I really loved this as a sort of finale to the series, um, and it was in the second person, which I like. I like second person novels, um, or at least I'm interested in them. So yeah, this vulnerable body, adi adi. This was my best sequel. Question three is new release you haven't read but want to. Um, there's one that Simon Savage has been going on about, been banging on about. God, I'm a dancer. I'll do you proud. Yes, here we go. It's um, <laughs> it's still life by Sarah Winman. Um. Yeah, I'm always interested when Simon Savage he um he sort of gets um excited about a book because usually I I am the same when I when I read it. So um yes, yeah, Sarah Winman's Still Life. Um I'm looking at his Instagram at the moment. Hopefully you can see that. A book that celebrates the big moments and small intricacies that make us human, the happy, the sad, the accidental and the coincidental, the ridiculous and the sublime. I do like a book that looks at the sublime. So, um, yes, a book about friendship, found family, as also being about two wonderful humans. And I quite like the cover as well. What else have we got? Question four. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Um, for this one, I'm going to turn to uh, Eric Carl Anderson. There was a book that he was talking about, which I was... I don't know if this is... Oh, what was it? Invested in this and, and so want to get um, involved by making a TBR. Oh, there it is. Oh, sorry. TV sorry, TV Eric. To read over Silence! Time. Sorry. An Ordinary Wonder by Bookie Papillon. Uh, yes. Um, so, what was the question again? <laughs> yes, it is already released um, in hardback, so maybe this is like a anticipated paperback. <laughs> um, Ordinary Wonder. Um, courage to need it to be yourself. So, richly imagined with art proverbs and folk tales, this moving and modern novel follows, follows Oto through life at home and at boarding school in Nigeria, through the heartbreak of living as a boy despite their profound belief they are a girl, and through a hunger for freedom that only a new life in the United States can offer. Yes, I'll go for that. Sign me up. Uh, Question five. Biggest disappointment. So I'm not going to win any fans with this. Now, this is Biggest Disappointment. This isn't like, this is the worst book I read. Um, this is just Biggest Disappointment. And this is, unfortunately, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's uh, Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud. Um, I love the writing in it. Um, she's fabulous. I mean, she won the flipping thingy bob, didn't she? But um, I, why was I disappointed? Well, I was, I was disappointed just at um, how I, th what I consider to be a little bit sort of tropey things going on. Um... Yeah, with the gay character, I just, it was just sort of things that I was like, mm, I don't, I think because I just wasn't really in the mood for a, a gay bashing novel, you know. Um, but as I said in my wrap up, I mean, it's completely me. I mean, I might be sort of looking at it through a European lens because this is set in, I can't remember where it's specifically set, but um, it's uh, set in the Caribbean and obviously um, attitudes towards gay people um, are not the same as they are in the UK. Um, and so it's important that we kind of still have novels that reflect that. But um, yeah, I just I just wasn't really in the mood, I don't think, for a, a gay bashing novel. Um, but so yeah, that's why it was a disappointment. Um, but I, I, still, I still would recommend it. I mean, it's fabulous and enough people like it. So it's probably, I mean, I, I imagine that you'd probably like it because just don't listen to me because, you know, because I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so question six, biggest surprise. The biggest surprise for me was Shuggy Bane. <laughs> uh, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Why was this a surprise? Well, it was a surprise because I thought I wasn't going to like it. <laughs> um, from all the sort of um, videos and stuff about it connected with the Booker Prize last year, I thought I was, yeah, I just thought I was going to um, find it exploitative or find it not you know, uh, uh, yeah, all, yeah, uh, that's it, that's it. I thought I wasn't going to like it, but I, turns out I did like it. Um, uh, there were bits that I kind of like went, well, uh, <laughs> there were bits that I thought were like, I mm, don't know, but um, overall I was like, yes, I enjoyed this. I, yes, I, 
understand why it won the Booker. Yeah, so that was the biggest surprise. It is, it is a lot, and as I say, it is a kind of like a conveyor belt of traumas. But um, um, yeah, I thought it's done. I, I really, I think the ending made me really, really like it as well. Um, the very, very ending, the last chapter. So I was like, "Ooh, Douglas Stewart." Go on then. Next, uh, question seven: favorite new author debut or new to you? Um, right, new to me. I had never read Umberto Eco before, and I read Name of the Rose earlier on this year, and I really loved it. Now this is it's translated, but um, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it counts. Yeah, I just really loved. I really loved the kind of high suspense thriller, like, oh, what's going to happen, coupled with the really, really kind of dense historical stuff. I mean, I do like a slow burner, but um, yeah, I just liked the the marriage <laughs> between um, between these two things. I thought it was, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. And I'm interested to read what his other books. I've, Kieran from Katie Books, he sent me, hang on. Uh, Ages ago, he sent me this whopper, um, the the Island of the Day Before by Umberto Eco, and so I'm very interested to get round to this. I think it's um, translated by the same translator, William Weaver. William Weaver, William Weaver. Yes, William Weaver. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to see what else he has come up with. Oh, what else have we got? Um, eight newest fictional crush. I do love how people react to this question because some people are like, I'm not answering that question, but I'm like, yes! <laughs> so this is a bit esoteric, but um, uh, what's this? I think it. Okay. So this is a bit esoteric, but um, there's a character in, in this, Hamnid, called Bartholomew, and he's basically Agnes's. Um, brother. I think they're twin. I think they're twins. I think. Um, Agnes is um, basically Anne Hathaway, um, married to William Shakespeare, mother of Hamnid. But her brother is Bartholomew, and Bartholomew, I don't know, yeah, it's a weird one, <laughs> because uh, he grows up to be this very kind of like powerful farmer, and um, he's like very kind of stern and doesn't really say much but he's a big sort of protector of Agnes and um he's very sort of like burly and stuff and he um <laughs> and he uh yeah he's he's just very kind of protective and kind of on the sidelines and I was just like whenever he turned up I was like oh Bartholomew come and rescue me so a bit of a weird one but there we go goodbye nine nine newest favorite character um so I'm going to go back to a book we've talked about before um Middlemarch. No, not Mr. Casabon. Oh, my library. No, not him. Um, Dorothea. Dorothea. Dorothea, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the stage, Dorothea. Dorothea, I just think is a fabulous, really, really fabulous um, protagonist. She's just really... Um, yeah, she's just... She's very... In ooh. Yeah, she's just, she's really, in really intelligent and really kind of bright and stuff. Um, but she gets things very, very wrong. And she kind of, um, yeah, she makes the wrong decisions. Um, and yeah, and just the way that she's written, I just, yeah, I just really like her. Dorothea. Oh, Dorothea. Um, yeah, I just really, I really liked, I really liked her. Question 10, book that made you cry. I have not, as of yet... Um, shed a tear completely um, this year from a book. I did last year, book a few times, a couple of times, but this year I have not, tears have not gone uh, from reading a book. However, I did get misty eyed at this book, uh, Open Water by Kalabazuma Nelson. And um, again, this is a debut, and I thought this was like, I really, really love this book a lot. Um, it's really, really fabulous. It's basically a love story. Um, set in London, and yeah, it's just, it sort of details um, the black male experience in Britain. It's just fabulous. Um, and why did it make me misty-eyed? Well, it's just, it's written so powerfully. Um, but yeah, it's just this, 
I think the love, the love story in it just really kind of, it got to me. It really, really got to me. Um, yeah, really, really gorgeous. Very, very high recommended. I hope that it's kind of um, um, long listed for prizes um, because I think it deserves it. Um, and it's in second person as well. So, you know, I'm a bit of a whore for a second person novel. But yeah, certainly that made me misty eyed. Uh, question 11. Book that made you happy. Yes, uh, red, white, and royal blue. It made me happy. It's it's a very it's <laughs> incredibly cringy. Um, it's it's kind of uh, it has moments which are like right, but it did make me happy. And I'm as I said in my wrap up whenever I talked about this, I'm I'm glad that a book like this exists. Um, I just think it's just yeah really really fabulous and I would if you haven't read it, I mean you probably have read it but um if you haven't read it and you're not sick of it appearing everywhere on social media and various different places then pick it up because it is a a fun light bit of escapism and yeah I just like that it exists in the world um what's next 12 most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received the most beautiful book um I think I think this is right. I think uh, Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, the hardback. I got this as a gift because I don't usually buy hardback fiction, but um, yeah, they've certainly done their work with with this edition. I mean, there's the book with its cover on, without the cover. Oh yeah, and it comes with this very nice bookmark. Uh, and then the actual book itself um, is this. You have this Piranesi, and yeah, they've just they've just done their they've just done a lot of work on making this book as nice as possible, which I I do appreciate. The book itself is strange, and um, I I enjoyed it, but I do understand when people say like what, <laughs> but um yes, oh and it's um shortlisted for the for the women's prize, isn't it? Um, I don't think it will win, but um. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know what will win. Maybe Vanishing Half. We don't know yet. But um, but yes, no, that's the most beautiful book, I would say. Uh, we're getting there. Number 13. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Oh, right. So um, so if you remember, last the end of last year, I did a... Um, oh, the longest journey. Last year, I did a Classics TBR um, video. And... I'm not doing I'm not doing too badly with that. I still need to get some more Dickens under my belt. So I want to read Barnaby Rudge. I kind of want to get the um the lesser known ones out of the way. So I want to read Barnaby Rudge and um the old curiosity shop and and the Pickwick papers and all that. I kind of want to get them out of the way um so that down the line I have the big whoppers bleak house and you know and the others <laughs> um that I haven't read. Um, what else? Oh, let, well, let me show you my TBR. Hang on. Ugh. There we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so here is my TBR shelf. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, some weird books. So I want to read that soon, Master and Margarita. Um, that's a charity shop um, book that I bought, which I thought was looked interesting. Uh, we've got this. And then we got uh, Catch Twenty Flipping Two. Um, I want to read that soon. Fathers and sons. Uh, um, flipping Tenant of Wildfell Flipping Hall. Um, me and Simon Savage said we were going to buddy read this, and so we should really, shouldn't we? Uh, a non fiction book. Non fiction book by David Lammy. Need to get ridden round to this. Uh, and then a few weird ones. So there we go. So that's on my that's on my um, in immediate TBR. Um, what else? Count of Monte Bread Bread. I want to read um, Dante's um, The Divine Comedy. I want to read The Divine Comedy because um, this year will be my thirty fifth birthday, and um, and yeah, it's like I think in in the book he is thirty five. I think. Um, so um, he goes down to hell when he's 35, and so I need to go down to hell now I'm approaching 35. So I want to read that. 
Um, 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 um. Oh, flipping um, war and flipping peace. War and flipping peace. I'd like. I'd like to. I'd like to read that because I, I said I would. Um, and what else? A bunch of other stuff. Uh oh, right. Yes. Now I need to tag tag people. So I'm going to tag um everyone, but I specific specifically would like. Oh, I specifically would like to tag Bob the Booker because um um he's fabulous and I would like to see his answers to this. And um, someone to Alex. From what page are you on? He said something like, um, I need to watch my back with Bob. So, uh, yes, I am watching my back with you, Bob, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, I want to see you do this. Who else do I want to see you do this? Put me to work and you instantly get me involved. AJ Dunn reads and writes. I want to see you do this as well. da 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 so yeah, Bob Booker, AJ Dunn reads and writes. Um, Jotson's books capades, please. That would be nice. Um, ben Green. Ben Green. I am really jealous of his hair. And <laughs> I'm sort of, yeah. I mean, my hair's a bit of a kind of... It's not too bad at the moment, but um, yes, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to see you do this. Play me the music. Right, so thank you for watching. If you've been watching. And I shall see you very soon. So, bye bye Give me da 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 Play me the music Give me a chance to come through All I ever needed was the music and the mirror and the chance to dance